Okay, so just to be perfectly clear, uh, I wasn't paid in any way for this video. This is just just a couple of tile guys talking. Uh, it's not it's not a sponsored video. I just want to be perfectly clear about that. So, hope you enjoy uh, the conversation that we had. So you know this guy. You've probably seen him in some videos. I'm just about to have a conversation with him. Bryant Bouchard. Uh, so, hi, Bryant. How you doing? Good. How you doing, Sal? Good. Uh, we met about, what, 11 years ago? Yeah, I'm going to say it was at least, I don't think we met before, but the uh, 11 years ago that you're talking about um, was at the uh, Ceramic Tile Education Foundation down in uh, Anderson, South Carolina. Yeah, at the um, John Bridge, um, mm -hmm. Schluter. And you, you had already been with Schluter for, uh, for, for a while then, right? Yeah, I would say, well, I started in September of 98. Yeah. And, and what happened, Sal, was we started doing workshops there uh, starting in October of 2001. So um, what we came up with for the class you came to was kind of like, sometimes we call it an elite class. And we would reach out to guys like you and other professionals that we had all met and got to know. And, you know, I mean, that you know, we call it an elite class and <laughs> isn't that the name of your company, Elite Tile? <laughs> yeah, 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 what a, what a, what a coincidence, right? Well, and, and that's, that's why we had to invite you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, yeah, in fact, you know, that um, before then, you know, I, I had known about Schluter and I, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't really used it that much. Mm -hmm. But then when I got to the class uh, and I did that class, it kind of opened my eyes a little bit because you guys don't just teach about about your product. You give right. like an overall um, background on tile and, and what it's all about. And ever since then, uh, you know, not immediately, but little by little by little, pretty much everything I do now uh, is a Schluter product or something that is similar to a Schluter product. Right. So, um, you know... But I think that's I think that's a good statement, Sal, because, you know, when I started using the products, it's actually back in uh, 1991 and it started with floor profiles yeah. and and they did have Dietra then, but I wasn't ready. You yeah. know what I well, mean? well, that's that's the whole thing, because, you know, you see a product and you and you're like, does this stuff really work? Right. Right. And right. then, you know, you when when you go to a training Mm -hmm. Sem you know, seminar or a workshop or whatever, you get a little more information about that. And then your brain starts to click, right? And say, mm -hmm. well, maybe this is a good thing. So, yeah. you know, but also you're not like, you're, you're not just some guy that started to work for Schluter. Mm -hmm. You were a tile professional and still were installing tile. Yeah. For many years before you, you work for Schluter, like me, you know. Um, so, you know, what's your history about, you know, how did you get into the trade? Yeah. So, you know, I grew up in a construction family. My dad actually was a plaster. And, you know, when I say that, Sal, that that's not drywall taping. I'm talking plaster on lath. Sometimes they would have horse hair. Yeah. Including in the, yeah, in the plaster. Yeah, a lot of times, so, you know, you go, you go into the really old houses and you pull it down yeah. and you're trying to cut out a section. Yeah. <laughs> and you end up taking out a bigger section. Because well, yeah. The, the idea is that it was supposed to be there for a long time and not yeah. be messed with. Right. So, yeah. so my dad was very young. He was probably 13 years old and he was working for his uncle doing painting and plastering. And this was in Quebec. So my, my parents are French Canadians, uh, both my mom and dad. So dad was a plaster by trade and a lot of his work was in the city of Montreal. And during the 1950s, he had a couple, uh, well, he did a couple projects for people that weren't honest. Let's put it that way. Even today, that's, uh, that's it might happen even today. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, mom and dad and dad's business was bankrupt a few times. Um, and that isn't a good thing, right? When that happens. Oh no, of course not. But 
my point is, is that even though that was a bad thing then, it resulted in my father looking to work somewhere else. And um, he moved the family to Plattsburgh, New York, which is only about an hour south. Yeah, so, something, sometimes something that seems like a, like a catastrophe mm -hmm. actually is the door opening to something much better. Right. I wouldn't be here if there hadn't been a few shady people <laughs> that ripped off my dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I know that for a fact because I'm, I'm one of six kids and I was born. I was the first U.S. born in both my mom and dad's family. So that that was kind of unique there. But um, so dad moved the whole family down here and um, he loved the area. It was a small, you know, farming community. And, and the builders loved his work ethic. And you know that, Sal, when builders know they can trust a tradesman? Well, you know, you got to clarify on that a, lot, a little bit because builders that like actually um, appreciate quality. Right. Once they find someone that does something the right way and, that, you know, they, they, you know they, they, they take pride in what they do, usually mm -hmm. they'll stick with them. Well, and that's, you know, we're talking, this is 1960. And it's still- yeah, How old were you in 1960? Well, I wasn't <laughs> born yet. <laughs> oh, okay, so I'm a little bit older than you. Okay, let's talk about that then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so, um, so you, know, you know, you came from Canada. Well, not you, but your family originated in Canada. I have actually yep. a little bit more of a diverse background because I, I wasn't even- like, like I'm, a, I'm an immigrant to mm -hmm. this country. I came here in 1984. Before then, I was actually born and raised in Australia, and yeah, then from yeah. and then from Australia, I went to, to Italy, and I lived in Italy for about nine, eight years, and then I came here. So mm -hmm. I've been here since 1984. And oh, so you you were born in Australia. I was born and raised in Australia. And what part? Uh, Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia. That's okay. down the south. Uh, Victoria's estate. Um, so, you know, I did, did high school and stuff there. And then I, then I moved to Italy, did a little bit of college. I have a twin brother mm. and he's still in, still in Rome. So you, no, no, you have, there's two of you. There's two. <laughs> there's two, there's two <laughs> you have a, well, you no, have there's a, only one of me. Well, then there's, there's a, then there's an inferior copy. He would yeah. say the other way. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now is he is he in the uh, trade as well? No, no. He 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 was uh, he's a military guy all his life. Mm -hmm. So that's how different we are. Yeah. But uh, that so anyway, I came to this country in '84, and I I didn't know a thing about time when I came here. I was about about 27 years old. So that was you know then I so I got into the trade because my father-in-law right was um in the, in the flooring industry and mm. they did tile they did hardwood they did uh, carpet they did all kinds of stuff and that was my introduction into in, into the flooring industry and actually before i started when it went into tile i actually did a little bit of carpet a little a little bit of everything and then years later i just specialized in in tile and that's all i've been doing for probably a good 20 years maybe mm -hmm. 25 years, just, just tile. Yeah. So uh, my background before that, before I, I was actually uh, an outboard motor mechanic, believe it or not. Mm. I repaired outboard motors. I'll, I'll remember that if I get a boat or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't remember that. <laughs> can you, can you work on Vespas since they're Italian too? And um, no, <laughs> okay yeah i haven't i haven't done anything on on that kind of stuff since uh 1984 because mm. i did that when i was in italy and then i came here and that was just, that's just a thing in the past now right don't, don't do anything like that anymore and believe it or not i'm not interested in it so when you when you came here from italy did you end up where you are right now today like where you're sitting did you end no. up no, no, I, um, you know, I had, I had some, so it's, for me, it was easier. I had some family here. So, you know, I, I stayed with the family mm -hmm. and then, you know, then I got married and that was in 1985. And you got then, married, you got married in 85, 1985. So did I really, what, what month? 
Uh, whoops, I gotta think about it. <laughs> Caught myself well, tell there. Tell your wife not to watch this. <laughs> it was yeah. <laughs> it was it was in June. Okay, I, I got married in October. So uh, uh, yeah, 1985. So 35 years. Same year. Well, hey, congratulations. Almost congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. So you've already d done 35 years in. Yeah, we just passed that. Yeah. True. So I got uh, I got a few years. I got a few months to go yet. <clears throat> oh, so. I do. I do have s something to add to that. I've known my wife since kindergarten. Oh, so wow. But but we weren't romantic till I don't know. I was in my early 20s so yeah. even though i i knew her yeah. since kindergarten which what were five or six years old then yeah well that's I've a known, great story you guys i've uh, known i've known her a long time well she got sometimes something she you've got nothing you got nothing to hide from her because you know <laughs> so long well you know i think it worked because you know we were friends and yeah we're still friends you know yeah. well i hope so you're married <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So what was I saying? Um, well, I was asking you where, you know, where did you end up when you first came? Oh, because so, I know well, you're, in, you're in Massachusetts now. I'm but, in Massachusetts. Yeah. But um, is that where you, is that where you came when you? Well, I, ha I uh, actually, when I, when I came, I came to Massachusetts because my family, the family I have here is in, in the town that Medford, I'm in Medford, Massachusetts. They're yeah. actually in this town. Okay. So I, you know, I stayed with an uncle for a while and then, you know, I, you know, I, I did some work and then finally I got married and, you know, we lived in, in another town for, for a year. Then I bought a condo in another town. Mm -hmm. And then in 93, I came right here where I'm sitting right yeah. here. So yeah. I don't want to go into too many details because, yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah. That's that's basically it. And so I started in the trade in in 1984. That's mm -hmm. where I started in the in the flooring industry. And I worked for a couple of companies. I got some experience. I got some some you know learned. The first company I I worked for, I learned the completely wrong way. As uh -huh. many as many people like you've probably had a similar experience. No, well, you work for your father. So, uh, well, well, you know what, Sal, I can say, I can look back and know there were a few things yeah. we, we could have done better. Let's say, well, well, you know, like, like me and you, right. Uh, in the early days. Right. And even for years after that, there's a lot of things that I did back then mm -hmm. that when I look back is like, really, mm -hmm. I did that. It's not because I, I, I did it because I knew it was wrong because that's how I thought it was supposed to be done. Oh, you know, another thing to add to that, Sal, is that we went according to manufacturer's recommendations at that time. And, you know, uh, many times they learn that there's a better way, right? Well, of course. Well, that's why you have product um, development and, and, and uh, testing and, you know, you figure out, well, maybe we can do this to that or that to the product, or maybe we shouldn't use it quite this way and do, that's just the nature of advancing in, in the industry, right? Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think not only were we learning, but so were the manufacturers. And so it was like a ride that we were doing together, you know? Oh, well, yeah. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I think the great company, Sal, were the ones who would listen to you and would listen to me, right? Well, and well, Yeah. No, well, of course. I mean, if you've got a, because you can test a product, you can, you can figure out how it works and then it goes out into the field. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then you get the feedback from, you know, the installers or whatever and say, well, why is this like this? Why can't it be like this? Or, mm -hmm. you know, can we use it for this? Can we use it for that? And then, you know, the product develops and you find yeah. out how it works the best. I mean, that's just the way things are. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. um, well, you know, I wanted to just finish up too, where, you know, when, when I was old enough to work for my dad, um, you know, when you, when you grow up in a construction family and uh, by the time I was 13 years old and we'd have, you know, a couple months of vacation from school in the summer. And, you know, by the time I was 13, my dad said, you want to make some money? And I thought, yeah, what the heck? I didn't know. I really didn't know a lot about what my dad did. You know, I did that every summer and we would do a few little tile jobs. And I always thought, 
they're kind of cool. They were little squares, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little squares, not like today. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, back then, and you, you'll remember this too, there was four and a quarter wall tile. Oh my God. There was, and there was the bigger ones, the six inch by six inch wall tiles. So that was wall yeah. tiles. Yeah. And then, and then the floors were mostly eight inch by eight inch tiles. Eight inch by eight inch. And then when the, uh, when the 12 inch by 12 inch was like, wow, these are so big. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. We couldn't believe it. We're like, wow, this is just like marble. <laughs> And remember, they tried to make it look like marble. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They did a really good job with that. <laughs> oh, remember the, the first ones would have one print. Yeah, that's right. No, like you could see the patent like and, oh, then, yeah. and then you had to decide, are you going to make them all go the same way? Are you going to are you going to make them random? Are you going to alternate I, them? <laughs> I did. I, I would rotate them at least the best I could to make them look different. Yeah. And yeah, you no know, matter do what you, remember, you did. Do you, do you remember you'd look for that? one uh aspect of the pattern that you'd see yeah yeah so it'd be in the corner or in yeah a, yeah because if it was in the middle you could you could switch it around so you would look for that one yeah. thing that you could say well this goes top right hand corner yeah. top right hand corner yeah. all the time i mean sure. it, yeah. it's you know we we have like states away right and yeah. we're like we have a very similar background right mm -hmm. so you know it's funny how like you have very like the way you learn it is like very similar. You know, you have yeah. have similar stories. Like remember plywood? You remember Luan? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and, and I have a funny story on Luan because you know, you were talking about um you know, you you know, you were saying, did you learn the right way? And I had my dad, which you know, he was a very proud man. So we, you know, he tried to do everything, you know, the right way. Yeah. And uh, when I, I got to remi remind me to, to, to talk about um, information and how available it was when you're done. Well, that's kind of where I'm going. Oh, okay. So, so, you know, today, I mean, it's amazing that, and unless you live through it like we did, you may not appreciate everything that's available today because you know it's available on your phone you know um any website any video you know your videos my videos they're there right yeah and i think back when my dad and i now this is a funny story again my dad was french canadian and he was one who did not like to read directions <laughs> So guess who got the job of reading directions? You did. <laughs> I did. I got good at it. Okay. Yeah. And um, I took it seriously. That was a blessing in disguise. It sure was. It really was. And it's probably one reason I have the job I have today because I adhere to directions. Well, you know, I would always read them because I didn't want my dad to get in trouble or us to get in trouble. And we didn't have videos back then, right? I mean, I think in the early 80s, VHS tapes might have been coming out or beta tapes or something like that. But there wasn't much in our industry, was no, there? No, no. Okay. It, yeah. It, information so, was hard to come by. Yeah. And, and so I always joke when I do uh, seminars um, now, I tell the attendees that the only instructions we had back then was on the back of the bag of ThinSat. Yeah, or the back of the and it's amazing how much information is actually on there and then the back of the bag of grout to explain how to mix it and everything and i'll i'll say the m word this today mastic it would, <laughs> <laughs> it would it would say where it was appropriate and where not to okay so anyway i can remember going as far back to the earliest days and remembering that luan was not it, we were told that it wasn't acceptable. Said it right on the bag. Yeah. So you and I both know that it was used. Oh, for sure. Despite the fact that our our industry, you know, the chemist and the thin set manufacturer said, "Don't yeah. go for Luan." And then you know, but the, that's because a lot of times, you know, even though the information is there, right mm -hmm. on the bag. Mm -hmm. Most, most times people don't read that. It's instead that the, what they might read is, well, you need so much water and you got to mix it for so long. Right. And then they don't even do that. They just add water. 
you know, or let's mix it. Oh, that looks good. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and then the, the Luan, you remember you used to, I used to cut that because we used to do a lot. I used to back, back in the day, I used to do a lot of vinyl tile and Luan was actually not bad for vinyl tile. Well, see, and I think that's why it crossed over into the tile. And, to, and I used to cut that with a utility knife. You can. That's because it was, it's so soft. You know, you could just cut it with a, try and do that with some, uh, you know, some exterior gray plywood. Not going to happen. Right. Right. Well, so when you could, if you go there for half an hour going over it and over right. it, but. So when you would cut it with a knife, I mean, you'd score it part way and then snap it. And well, you could, if you, if you went over it a couple of times, you could cut all the way through it. All the way through. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, and then another thing is, right. You usually use for vinyl tile, you usually use quarter inch because you just want a flat, yeah. smooth surface. Right. Yeah. And quarter inch plywood, as you know, right. Shouldn't be anywhere on a tile assembly. Right. And especially right. if it's, if it's, uh, if it's Luan plywood. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of things. A guy I used to work for mm -hmm. at the very beginning, you know what he loved to do? What's Jersey that? mud jobs. Mm -hmm. So for anyone that doesn't know what a Jersey mud job is, you get the Y lad, you staple it down, right. And then you skim it with, with thin set or you, you, you install your tile right over the Y lad. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is like at the very beginning when I was first starting and I'm like, and then we'd always have to go back like a month later or two weeks later and we'd have to change 10, 20 Ooh. tiles. Right. Because they would crack. Mm. And I was like, there's something wrong with this. This, yeah. this, you know, I didn't know anything about tile back then. I'm talking about like 19, a early uh, mid 1980s, like this yeah. is like within the first couple of years that I was I was doing tile. Yeah, and I'm like this this can't be right, and I was like thirsty for like you know where do I get this information from? And you, as we said, right, it wasn't easy to come by. Mm -hmm. So then you discover, then then you know then I went into after I worked for that I worked for another company and they were more um, wanted to do things more the correct way, mm -hmm. but even then right. They didn't want to share that much information. Mm. They would tell you what to use and, and, and they would supply the materials, but they wouldn't give you like any information. So that's, that's when I discovered the, the, at the time, PCA, Tile yeah. Council of America. Back then it was sure. a TCA. Right. And then I discovered uh, some magazines, right? Mm -hmm. So I would be like, I get those magazines. I look for the technical uh, information. I, I cut, I still have them. I'd cut out the, you know, they have, um, you know, some article on how to do this. And one of the ones I remember, actually, I might even still have it is about specifically about low and plywood. So, you know, information was hard to get, get back then. And a lot of people didn't want to share it. And that's one of the reasons why I do the videos that I do is because, you know, it's better to, even if you're a DIYer and you're doing it, it's better to know the right way than try and guess at it. Right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I, I certainly remember, you know, the majority of our stuff was, you know, exterior grade plywood, thankfully. Yeah. Uh, and something uh, that I avoid with a passion today. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so what happened was uh, in my career, you know, I, I graduated high school, 1980, summer of 1980, and I didn't really want to stay in construction. Uh, I, I wanted to do something different. My parents offered to pay for college, and I didn't want to burden them with that. So I went to the four armed services. <laughs> I went, and they were all in one building. So I talked to the Air Force guy, the Marines, the Army, and the Navy. And uh, the Navy just sounded like the best one. You know, I was going to go into nuclear power training and all that. Oh, really? And so that's, that's where I went. I joined the United States Navy. I, I did my four years and went back to work with my dad. But right around that time, we had an old tile setter. He had been the tile setter in our county since the end of World War II. When he got out of the, he was in the Navy also. He went right in into being a tile setter. And so this is about 1984, around the same time you're talking about. Yeah. And he approached me and he said, I'm getting too old for this. I heard from your dad, you like tile. So he basically said, 
I'm going to send everybody your way. Yeah. And, and, and he you also, had how much experience with tile? What's that? At that time when you had, so how much experience with tile? That I had? Yeah. Not a lot, but this guy, he, he helped me go from zero to 60. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. In a short time, because he said, do this, do that. Yeah. 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 You know, and, yeah. and all those things. You know, that's actually strange because back then the, um, they didn't, you know, old setters or old cross people didn't want to share what they knew. Well, he, he was retiring. Yeah, I know, but that's but that's that's still funny because a lot is of it? times they just are like you know, <laughs> this is a secret, you know what I mean? And they didn't want to share it. So, but you you know you got got lucky I guess, really in a sense. I guess I got lucky then. You yeah. know he he was this. I mean, I'm only five foot four. You know, I'm not that tall, Sal. And um, but this guy's name was Ray. He was shorter than me, and he was mean. Oh I really? Mean, Oh yeah, he'd throw pieces of tile at his helper. Every every day we'd see his helper leave at noon because they got <laughs> he couldn't to fight take again. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd be back the next morning and they'd go through it again. Yeah. And um and so I, I remember one time we were all at the same project. We were doing the stucco on the outside, and Ray wanted to talk to me. And I thought, is he gonna throw something at me? <laughs> But he was really, he was really kind. And, you know, he liked, he and my dad were from the same school, you yeah. know, they, they lived through the depression and they were, yeah. they were buddies. They, yeah. they admired each other. So uh, Ray took me under his wing and taught me everything that he About knew. Tile. Yeah. 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 I mean, when we're talking tile, you know, he floated mortar beds for years, you yeah. know, doing um, convenience stores and, and the freezer areas because back then that's that was ha how you did it back then yeah 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 that guy his hands were so beat up you know yeah um, yeah just just you know and, and you know you probably have a similar experience to me and like when i first started um condos mm. condos four and a quarter tile right oh yeah it was just endless endless like i think like we did a couple of projects one was like 400 units another one was like i know 300 100 units and that's where i i learned very first tile right mm. so mastic yeah plywood subfloor yeah with plywood um underlayment mm -hmm. uh eight by eight tiles or six by six tiles on the floor four and a quarter by the time I would, you just one after another, after another, after another, after another. A set of fixtures. Remember the fixtures? The set of fixtures. Uh, tub soap. Dish, oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Two towel bars. Uh, toothbrush and tumbler. Uh, uh, vanity soap dish. What else was that? On oh, the paper holder, right? Every yeah. every job got a set of those. Yeah. So, just repetition, repetition, repetition. By the time I was done with um, with doing those, right? I. I would go in, I would do, I would do like four complete bathrooms, like five foot above the shower and four feet around. I do like five of them, right? In one day or four or five of them in one day. So, and then, and everything was done in mastic back then. So, you know. Well, you know, you know, that's, that's so cool because I have a similar story. Um, the days in, you know, those hotels. Yeah. Okay. So there was one being built here in Plattsburgh and I, I got to think it was probably around 1985-ish. And uh, my dad got the, um, the job to do all the tile. And so basically what it was, Sal, was tubs. And so like you said, five feet up, three walls. And then, um, so it was my brother, my father and I that would do the tile. And then we had our helper who would follow us after a day or two and start grouting those walls. Well, yeah, I had to, I had, I, you know, we would do like a whole unit, which would be like either eight or 12 units. And then once they're all done, we go back and grout, grout every single one of them. So I, re I remember that um, just like you said, once you figured one, you knew your layout, yeah. you knew either. It'd be slight differences. Yeah. You you knew that either the the grout line was center or the tile the center of the tile was center and it, and they were all pretty much the same. Yeah. And um, so my dad was a hard worker. He would do six a day. 
Okay, that's not grouted, of course. It's like yeah. what you were saying. Yeah. He would set six a day. My older brother would do five. And I'll never forget this because I couldn't catch up to those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to the point I could do you four slacker. a day. <laughs> yeah. You know, Sal, I never said I was fast. <laughs> so, well, that's not important, right? That's not important. So, oh, you know, but, you know what I always say, too? Right? <laughs> People won't remember how fast you did it, but they, every day they'll see how well you did it. That's true. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I would do four a day. And so what is that? Six plus four is 10, 15. So between the three of us, we do 15 a day. So was that just the tub area or feet, four feet around? Uh, just the tub area. Just the tub area, yeah. Yeah. And then um, this was interesting. The builder knew to have the, re the floor, the bathroom floor recessed. Oh, really? Oh, so you yeah. do mud. So we floated mud. Yeah. And then they were one by one mosaic. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the grout was unmodified back then. There was no polymers in the grout. Yeah. And so we mix would, latex. Huh? You mix latex in it or not? Nope. Nope. What we would do is you mix up your grout, you use your Teflon rubber float, just like you normally do. And then you'd wait maybe five, 10 minutes and you'd take powder out of the bag and sprinkle it onto the, the floor. Yeah. And then you would sprinkle sawdust and then use a burlap bag with the flat of your palm. And I, I never did that with um, with uh, regular tile, but we did that with quarry tile. Well, that's yeah, we did quarry and we did the mosaics. And the one thing cool about that, Sal, was that the grout would dry very quickly. Number one. Yeah. Number two. It was right to the surface. Yeah, it was it was flat even. It was completely like, like yeah, right up to the to the edge of the tile. Yeah. There there was there was no better way to do that yeah. than that method. But yeah. then, you know, I tried to do that method years later with a modified grout. Oh, what a mess. <laughs> it doesn't work that well. I no, know. no. Yeah. In fact, in fact, that was that was one of those situations where I I'm admitting that I made a mistake because, <laughs> oh, because the, you never have made any, any other mistake besides that one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but the customer called and said, the grout looks all modeled and it, and it did, it looked terrible. Yeah. You know, and, another thing was too, when, if you, sometimes if you, if, it, if it dried up too hot and you rubbed it with the burlap, but you get the lines, the burlap, burlap lines in it. You remember that? Yeah. 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 There was that little time frame yeah. open window of doing yeah. it. Right. Yeah. But that's, you know, so there we have the similarities of doing those, tub, we'll call them tub hops or tub surrounds. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't have it in front of me. I should have uh, brought it down. I, I did find it the other day. I have, uh, you know, American Olean was one of the famous brands. Oh, yeah. And I've got, I've got my folding ruler that I picked up at one of the tile shows. We'll talk, we should talk about tile shows too. Oh, and, yeah, for sure. But this this American Olean ruler, um, maybe you had one, but on one side, it was color coded like it'd be red, then white, red, then white for four and a quarter. When you flip it over, it would be color coded for six by sixes. Yeah, I, I never had that. But I remember like years ago, like a lot of a lot of a lot of tub areas, right? Mm -hmm. Were done on drywall. Oh yeah. Oh right? yeah. And so now I'm talking back in like the late eighties, um, the early nineties. Right. Mm -hmm. So you get calls, you get calls. Oh, I got my, my wall soft. You know, I need to need a need a repair. Yeah. So you go in and you take first, first off I, I would have, because practically everything was four and a quarter tile, practically yeah. everything. Oh yeah. So I had these sample boards, right? So first thing I would do is measure the tile. Is it four and a quarter or is it four and three eighths? Because, oh, okay. uh, because it was like uh, America Orleans. Um, Florida, Florida tile had the four, four, and, three four and three eighths. And then there was another one. I think it was Mannington at the time was four and three eighths. Okay. And then there was American Orleans, the United States Ceramics. Oh, yeah, U.S. That, Ceramics. Um, yeah. There was a bunch of different companies, right? I had like sample boards. I go in with the sample board. Say so it's this tile here, right? And 90% of the time, you could get an exact match, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, so you take out like three feet around, yeah. right? 
and you know try and find like a, a solid spot in the in, in the drywall you take three put in some backer board some cement board and then retile and by the time you were done it would look like it had never been touched right i i must have done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those yeah yeah we the one of the local stores that i would do installs for they had a large warehouse in the back of their of their store and uh i remember those days because any extras they kept yeah and and it was awesome because customers could say well this job was done 20 years ago oh yeah we still have the tile yeah but we Not could today. do those those repairs it might be you remember it was yellow or that uh lime green or whatever green yeah blue, blue blue and the pink pink, pink. and then yeah. what was that one with the, the gold specks it was um well there was do you remember salt and pepper salt and pepper that was the black speck. and then there was the gold specks yeah. um I can't remember the name of, name of it. And then any kind of trim you wanted, they'd have they'd have the bull nose, the yeah. S4269s. I even remember the numbers, some of the numbers, the uh, S Nancys, the S Marys, which would be like outside corners. They'd have yeah, the little have the cove corner. base. They'd have all kinds of of trim that you you wanted. I don't think you can get it today. And then on the back of the sample boards, they had them all listed out. So you know, Sal, in one way, it was a simpler time. It was. I mean, like you said. If there was, let's say, eight colors from this manufacturer, um, for a client, they would just go, okay, I need to pick one of these eight. Yeah. So sometimes, right, I, you, this probably doesn't happen to you now because you work for, for Schluter, right. right? Right. But on occasion, you get a call for someone that you did work for like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. And they call you and say, you know, you did my bathroom 20 years ago. You know, we're thinking of updating it. <laughs> and right and you yeah. go back and you look at it and it's like wow it lasted this long <laughs> you know because back back then everything you did right wasn't exactly up to par because you know you didn't have the knowledge you have now i've been doing tile for 35 years been sewing right. tile for 35 right. years so you know 10 years in even 15 years in you didn't you know you had the experience you had the the knowledge of how how you did it and it worked right. But mm -hmm. you didn't know it's because information was hard to come by. You didn't have all everything you needed to know. So today, yeah. there's like we said earlier, there's certain things that I did back then that I, you know, I cringe at when I think about it. And I'm probably, I'm sure you're the same way. Well, yeah, and that's that's so true. And and the the good news is, you know, people that are getting into it today, or um, even if they're in it for five years or even 10 years, they've got people like us, they've got the tile council. I mean, cause we've all learned, our industry has learned what worked, what didn't work. And yeah. And then, and, and today it's so much easier. You've got these social media, like yeah. Facebook, we got all these closed tile, tile groups, which, which is just industry professionals. And you know, another thing that, that is so important that a lot of people still don't get is mm -hmm. get to know your reps. Right. Right. Um, because if you need to know something, mm -hmm. like, especially like I know my Schluter rep, he's Tim. You know, I'm not going to say his last name, but, but it's Tim, right? I know my, my other reps too, my, my pay rep. I know my Laticrete rep. I know, I know them all, right? Because if you're using a product, right, and you have a question about it, you can go looking for the information or you can just call the rep, yeah. right? And, yeah. and you get, you get the, what you need when you need it. So let me give you my perspective, because I've been a rep for Schluter since 1998. And I oh, started- by, by the way, right? You should say, because <laughs> I didn't say that at the beginning, what your actual position is now. Yeah, well, so I started with the company as a field rep, okay? So I worked underneath a territory manager. And after about two years, I became a territory manager. Now, my territory was all New England. So for those of, there's some people that don't know the states of New England, but there's six of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, not everybody knows yeah. the six states. Yeah. And I also covered New York, which included New York City. And yeah. it was so much fun, you know? Yeah. A lot and, of territory to cover. It, yeah. But Sal, it was, it was so much fun. Um, if I could start over and do it again, I would, because yeah. it, it was, I met people like yourself and others that, um, shared the passion, you know, and that's, what's fun because yeah. we get it. 
you know, we understand, you know, each other. We have similar backgrounds. And then, and then I went to become a regional manager in which I was then uh, in a position of supervising. Um, I think I was up to seven people that I supervised and I loved doing that as well. And then about a year and a half ago, I switched and joined the education team. So now I do those workshops that uh, I might do 44 different, you know, workshops a year. So I'm, I'm somewhere different every week. Um, but the one thing you, you didn't mention is how you became um, in the videos, because there's a lot of videos on, 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 on Schluter's YouTube channel and where you're, you're actually in, 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 you do the videos for Schluter back then. Well, that's, that's another thing. And you still we have. Did, you've still done some recently too, right? I have done some recently. It's, it's hard because I have a busy schedule. But uh, the um, video team will call me and say, you know, are you available? And, and of course, I always, you know, want to help out and do those. Um, but yeah, I mean, we both are in videos. I'm going to wonder how you got into it. But my, my situation was since, since I live in Plattsburgh, New York, that's where Schluter's North American headquarters is. And um, so... I started, you know, picking up product there in 1991, starting with, you know, floor profiles. Well, finally, I said, you know, I should work for you guys. And they said, hey, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it was almost that simple. Yeah. You know, that, <laughs> that was the... It sort of wasn't as big as it is now back then. Well, no. I mean, when I was going to the warehouse, you know, there were two employees in 1991. <laughs> two, two people. <laughs> And um, one of them's still with us, actually. So, yeah. you know, he's over 30 years. But, um, you know, in this location here, we're probably 600 or more. Yeah. Employees. So yeah. it's been, yeah, you've been up here. I've been it, there a couple of times, yeah. It's It's been a great um, provider of jobs for our yeah. local area. But anyway, I started with the company in 98. And almost immediately, they asked me, do you want to be in videos? And I didn't know what that meant. I just, I said, okay. I, I didn't know it was going to be hard work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, and I think one of the first videos was, you know, just combing thin set and rolling out the Dietra, you know, yeah. I actually, I, I remember those videos and you have a nickname, but I'm not going to say. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Every, yeah, everybody, everyone that sees you calls you Hollywood. <laughs> right, right. I don't mind the nickname. You could be called worse, couldn't you, Sal? You know? <laughs> and you know, it's funny, too, because sometimes I'll watch your videos. Um, not, you know, uh, the shooter videos, right? Yeah, and there's yeah. one that I think it's always you that they cut in. It's when they, they say, the D and you should use the Dietra trowel or whatever it is, and you hold up a trowel, right? I think that's actually always the same clip of you holding up that trowel. Am I right or am I wrong? Oh, it probably is. I mean, you know, they they wouldn't call me back in for, you know, just to hold that again. You know, it's like, yeah, they're good. They can reuse stuff without yeah. having to go I back. Know. I've done that too. But how did you get into the, uh, the video world? So it was by mistake. Well, not by mistake, but, um, so I had the, the website has gone. The, the website, uh, uh, HTML is still the same, right? But the original website mm -hmm. was like, well, you know, I got to put some content on, on this website. So, you know, pictures are good, right? Yeah. And then this is back in 2006 or 2007. Well, that's not that long ago then. Yeah. Well, I mean, 13, 14 years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, that's right at the beginning of YouTube. Oh, okay. Okay. Because before that, I think YouTube started in about 2006 or 2000. 2006 See, doesn't it feel like it's always been here yeah i know it's not but that's a, that's a funny thing right so <laughs> i was like well let me just shoot some video all right and then i'll upload it to youtube and then embed the video into my website and that's mm -hmm. what i did i did just did a bunch of videos I had n the the intention was never to do a youtube video the intention was Upload the because that was the easiest way to do it. Just upload the video and then embed it in the website. So you go through my website and then you see, you see, you know, click on a video and you see some of my work and stuff like that. And that's so I did that and I did that for a number of years. And then um, YouTube 
contacted me and said, you know, your videos are, are being, uh, you know, becoming popular. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to monetize? Because back then you couldn't, anyone can monetize. This, it's changed several times. Now pretty much anyone can monetize if you're over a thousand uh, subscribers. And, mm -hmm. but back then you had to be invited, right? Okay. So I said, why not? You know what I mean? Yeah. Why not? <clears throat> so, um, so I just kept on doing what I was doing. And then one day, probably about five, six, six years ago, I said, why don't I make a how-to video? And that's where it all started. Mm. So I, I, I kind of like fell into it. And, uh, and then when I, but the funny thing about that too is now, cause you, you do these videos and then you get a lot of comments and feedback and oh uh, yes so oh, now yeah. that has actually meant that now when i do a video right i do research right because the information that i i give i want it to be correct because i i don't want people saying well that's not even though that still happens <laughs> right yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, there's one there's one video in particular where i reference the nt uh the tcna handbook right and and I show that and I, I reference it, right? And I still get a ton of people saying, that's not how you do it. Oh yeah. Right? So, yeah. but- Yeah, you know. I, I would say, Sal, I probably had it easier because um, for a couple of reasons. One, you know, we've always had a technical department and they sweat over- Yeah, and they, they sweat over the detail. Oh, you just have to show up and shoot. Yeah, pretty much. And then, the editing and then the encoding and then the uploading and that, that's all none of your, your problem. Right. But right. here's another thing you, you touched on this right at the beginning about when we would uh, use products for a manufacturer and we're the field, we're, we're, we're the ones, you know, testing it in the field, let's say. Yeah. So the good, good thing with, with our company Schluter systems, especially back then, because everything was manufactured in Germany at the time. And Mr. Schluter, who's our founder, still has a company called Schluter Tile Company. So oh, before, really? yeah, be, yeah, oh yeah. Before we would even get the product, they were using it. They, they were testing it out. Yeah, so they would, you know, he would come up with an idea and, you know, whether it's Ditra or Curdy or uh, Dilex, EK, something. And then it'd go in production, they would test it in the lab, but then his tile company would, and he'd listen to his guys because, you know, they were working for him and they were setting tile every day. Yeah. And, and th that's how you find out whether what you intend, intended to work, to work and how that's when you find out if it actually works. Out. I mean, when you think about it, that's pretty smart. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's staying inside the box and just saying, Hey, we still install tile. And when we make something, we'll have our guys use it first. And so in the early years, when we got the product, they had already gone through the, the yeah. hard, the hard well, stuff. That, that, that was smart because, you know, you find out if it actually works before you put it to market. And I'm right. sure there were products that they tested that was like, no, nope, this ain't going to work. Right. Yeah, I'm sure. We, of course, we never heard of those. But. Yeah, of course, we never heard of them. <laughs> but, you know, something, no one needed to hear them about, about them. But it's good to hear that you get some uh, negative chatter once in a while, uh, too, Sal. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm going to have to say that probably the o vast overwhelming majority, right, is like positive. Yeah. Right? I, I, I would have to say like 95%. Yeah, but that's then you good. always have those trolls and those, those people that know better than me, which yeah. there are plenty of people that know better than me, but they know better than the manufacturer. They both know better than the TCNA. They know better than everyone out there. They are the ultimate authority in how to do things, right? Yeah, know, Even I though know. they never set a tire. You know, I, I think we were chatting about this one day and uh, we were talking about how we first, you know, which, which was the first show where and when and yeah. all that stuff. So, you know, I actually knew about coverings for a long time. But I never had like, wh why am I gonna go? Mm -hmm. Why am I? I'm just a, I'm just an installer. I mean, what does it have to, to offer for me? And then, um, 
this is my first one was probably in wasn't that long ago it was probably 2014 2016 because i had never been to one before then but now since then i go every year right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um someone that i met through tile geeks right uh become you know become good friends right sure. he goes to me you want to go to coverings and i was like that's all i needed it was just a, that little I, tiny push I, I think i know who you're talking about <laughs> you know what i'm talking about right? <laughs> yeah so, so um <laughs> so he goes you want to go to coverings i was like like, yeah, I mean, I, I just needed a tiny little push to go, right? Because right. I'd right. always wanted to go, but I had no incentive to go. And mm -hmm. and the first time you go, it's an eye opener. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's like you have no idea what the industry is about and how extensive it is and everything that goes into it until you've been to one of those shows. And right there and then at that first show, and then the educational opportunities that you have there, they have all kinds of seminars and all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah. And then the first time I went, I was like, I have to go every year. And every year, ever since. So the first one was Chicago. Then it was Orlando. Then it was um, Atlanta. Right. Orlando. Every other year it's in Orlando. And then this year it was supposed to be in um, New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. Right. New Orleans. Yeah. And that got canceled. First time in the history of coverings that it got canceled. Right, and so we'll be going next year. I think it's back in Orlando, mm -hmm. so uh, I'll be I'll be going there. You probably won't, but <laughs> I'll be going there. Mm. So, um, yeah, yeah. With my my job's a little different than yeah. So it's different now. It's different, and then you know, for you, it's a different story than it is for me. Because for mm. you, you go and it's a job, right? Well, yes, but you know, my introduction to it was ninety one. That was my first show. Yeah. Oh, just before. But mm -hmm. I do see you every year, or I have seen you almost every year at JLC. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I was doing that since hmm, probably 2002 or 2003. Yeah. When, we, when I first got invited to, you know, or our company did. Um, and I, I would have that booth by myself. <laughs> And, and of course, when you started seeing us there, we were probably up to 10 or 12 people running. Yeah. But, you know, the first few years, we were the new kids on the, on the block. So, um, yeah, so I, I would do it by myself. Yeah. And each year it got busier, you know. Um, well, my my thing, I, I told you how I had the old tile guy who taught me a bunch of stuff. And he worked for this one particular store up here. And they had a woman, her name was Andre, and she was she was great. And she would always uh, give me really good jobs. You know, she she knew all the important people <laughs> in the area. And well, that's the jobs you want. That's it. Good paying jobs. And so it was like towards the end of 1990. And she said to me, uh, you should go to the tile show. And I, I didn't even know what she was talking about. What is a tile show? You know? So she gave me a little bit of information because back then you'd get it in the mail and she goes, you know, give this some, some thought. And so I'll never forget it. It was actually May, uh, May 6 of 1991. And, um, it was in Miami beach. Oh, really? And it was at the Jackie Gleason convention center, which, which was, it's too small now. Yeah. To host it. Oh yeah. And that's that's one of the reasons it never comes to Boston. They don't have a convention center big enough. There's only a few cities now, really. Yeah. So I we went, my wife and I went, and um, so this is May of 1991, and uh, I I had never heard of Schluter, but I'm you know yourself, you can't see it all in one day. Oh no! And yeah, even well, in when I go, when I go, uh -huh. I go for the entire thing. Well, that's it. But even then, it was it seemed big. There was so much, right? The second day of walking around, that's when I um, came upon a booth that said Schluter Systems, Plattsburgh, New York. And I said, wait, are you are, are you guys from Plattsburgh, New York? And they yeah. said, yeah, they yeah right where you live, right where I live. So I saw that they had floor profiles and I thought, wow, that's a really good idea because uh, Sal, the only thing I did was tile. And so the other guys that would do carpet, vinyl or hardwood, 
would come in after me and ship you a tile. Oh yeah. Especially, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I don't want to insult carpet installers, but we had guys up here oh, that oh, like, yeah. like to chip my tile. So yeah. the, the that, metal, that, edge, that, 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 not yeah. that cop. <laughs> yeah. So they're tucking in their carpet and a hammer blow misses their whatever. So uh, that's, that's how I learned of Schluter was to go to Miami beach. So uh, when I got back home, I went to that warehouse and it was just like, Oh my gosh, it's all this stuff. Yeah. And it's right there. And, and so it was fun because I was the first one to use it in the area and I would learn more and more and, and it was an easy sell. Uh, to the customers, yeah, because I'd say this is what it does, yeah, and you know, and, and you you think about that now too, right? Um, when when people are talking about um, uh, like metal trims, yeah, what do they call it? Schluter metals. Yeah, even if it's not ours, even if it's not yours, right? It's yeah. like a yeah. oh, we can use a Schluter metal. They don't make the we can use use a Schluter metal, and then they might. You know, yours is the, the most uh, common, I would uh, I would imagine, right? But then other companies make them, right? Right. But it's still a shoe of metal. Yeah. I agree with you. You know, when, when you first see a tile show like that, the coverings, and back then, you know what? It, it was called ITSI, which stood for International Tile and Stone Exposition. And so I went three years in a row. It went from Miami to Chicago. You know something? Now that you say that, that does mm -hmm. ring a bell. Yeah. Yeah, it, it kept that name for a number of years. I don't I don't remember now what year it changed yeah. to coverings, but you know, when I'm doing workshops, I tell the attendees if you've never been, you owe it to yourself. To go. Go. At least once. At least once. At least once. Because if it's like us, you're just blown away, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can you can you can um see pictures of it, you can hear about it, you know, you can what what but it, it's like it's like if you go into the Grand Canyon, right? You yeah. can see pictures of the Grand Canyon, Niagara Falls. You can see pictures of Niagara Falls until you actually go. You don't really, you can't understand what it actually is. That's true. So, yeah, you're right. and coverings, well, it's not like the Grand Canyon, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it has a similar kind of, wow, this is more than I thought. You know what I, I liked about it too, Sal, was that the manufacturers were willing to, to talk to me. I was a one man tile guy. Yeah. Yeah, they're happy. They want you to go out to go go and talk to them, and mm -hmm. you know, and then you know they're not really trying to sell you anything. They just just there to give information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a great great. And then some of the stuff, like you go there, right? And then you walk around where the tiles are, and then you see these big, big ten feet by five foot porcelain. What do they call them now? Gauge porcelain panels, right? Yeah. And and you know, it's like. I've actually done the course on that, you know, so, you know, I don't do those because I'm just a one man guy. Right. But I know how to do it. And, and it's like, wow, they make them this big. Yeah. So there's some, yeah. you know, and then you see tools and other stuff that, 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 that are there that you had no idea that that were available. Yeah. No, that, that was always fun. Snap cutters, new wet saws. Yeah. And you get I, to try them sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's really one of those things where if you recognize something will save you time and money, you know, then the trip was worth it. Yeah. And then a lot of times if you hang around to the end of the end of the I, show, yeah. they because they don't want anything that they've got there, they don't want to pack it up. Right. right? right. So if you wait till the end, you can usually get a really good deal on a cutter or, or a mixer or, or something or other, because they'd rather sell it to you because they can't sell it as new anymore. Right. right. They'd yeah. rather sell it to you at a discount. Yeah. Right. Then put it in the truck and have to take it back. Sounds like you did that a few times, Sal. I actually never did that. Uh, but I, I know I know people, I've seen people that have done it mm -hmm. and uh you get really, really good deals. Right. right. So, you know, it just makes sense, right? Why why bring it back if you can sell it? You know, you you mentioned too there about and knowing swag. You get a ton right. of swag. <laughs> <laughs> you you talked about knowing your rep. Yeah. And sometimes at the at the trade shows, you'll not only see your rep. Sometimes you see other people in the organization. Well, yeah. You know. Yeah, and then if you go multiple times, mm -hmm. you get to know people because you know when I you know when when I first went to the first one, it was like about the show. 
right? Yeah. And the second one was about the show. Now I go, I go, it's about the people. Yeah. Because you get to see people that you've met. You get to see, you know, it's the people that you wouldn't wouldn't otherwise otherwise see. Mm. And you know, so and you know, I always get people that um, you know, that walk up to me and say, hi, hey, hey, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. And it's like, it's good. It's good to good to do that. Yeah. No, I think, um, you know, my first show with Schluter Systems was 1999. And uh, so that was the first time that I had to stand in a booth for four days. <laughs> <laughs> What's a fun, huh? <laughs> well, you know, I do miss those days. And the reason is because, you know, we were st still a small company, still a new product, right? And uh, gosh, I still have friendships that I made from those, you know, early years, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then especially if you go back, you see those same people. A lot of times you see those same, same oh, yeah. people. And, uh, you know, like John Bridge, every time I go, I see John Bridge, mm -hmm. right? And uh, there's some other people too that, um, that you see, then yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's good. You know, it's, you, you, you create relationships, you create contact, you network and it's, uh, and it's, when you do that, it's actually better for you because it opens up doors that you would otherwise wouldn't have had. Right. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, you got any other good stories? Well, let's see. We talked about coverings, how we, how we found coverings. We talked about Schluter and, you know, it's interesting because you did mention, you know, you can't, I always say with, with Schluter products, they were so different than what was the standard at the time. And, and I think as a professional, you have to get your head around new ideas yeah, and take your time and, and approach to it. Um, and that was always pretty cool because, you know, our sales always did well, but it was always like on this nice gradual growth. And it was nice because people did have to think it through. Yeah. And so some of the earliest people that were using it are still using it today. Yeah. You know, some, some of the guys I met. In, and you know, there's another yeah. thing too, right? So, um, so you guys were the first with like an uncoupling mat, you guys were the first with a bonding flange, right? A lot of people have been copying that stuff. Yeah. And, and that's, that's okay because it's I think okay. But you know, but you know, but the thing of the more important thing, right? If they're copying it, right? Why? Yeah. Because it's something that works. Well, and, and I think that goes all the way back to Mr. Schluter. And uh, he realized that if the idea is good and it's right, then it, the whole industry should go that way. Yeah. And, and I think his ideas and methods have been copied uh, quite a bit. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. And, and that's, that's good. I mean, because, you know, when we were alone on our Island, you know, we were looked upon as this strange exotic product from Germany, but now uh, it's really viewed many, you know, many people come to our workshops because they've heard so much about Schluter yeah. and they they've come to trust us. And, and I'm really proud of that fact that, you know, I can go do workshop and speak from a contractor's perspective. And I can tell yeah, you because honestly. You, you actually were in the mud, like, like, yeah. uh, like the tile guys. So you actually understand where they're coming from. Yeah. And, and you know how you said earlier that sometimes you get 95% good feedback and 5% that's like, you know, whatever. Um, but I remember one day um, somebody got, the hair on the back of my neck up or whatever the phrase would be, uh, got my goat, I guess. <laughs> and, and, and this person said, Oh yeah, you probably use Schluter cause you work for Schluter. And that got me a little angry because, <laughs> you know, I had been using Schluter products for about seven or eight years. See, they don't know your history. They don't right. know. Your history. So I, I found this, I know it's hard to see on the screen, but it's a, uh, uh, invoice. And this was on December 12th, 1997. Wow. So before I started with Schluter. And on this particular job, I ordered two pieces of Dialex EKE, two Rondak, three inside corners, one outside corner, a roll of Ditra, and an A100. 
So there, there was it that, was that that was when the Dietra was in the form today, right? It, it was the old one, you know, with the linear. You probably have a sample of it. You do. I don't have a sample of it. Oh, you got a picture of it? This, that's that's the one. Yeah. That's because the one. The one we know of today came out about 2000, 2001. Yeah, you got some of our old stuff there. Yeah, that's cool. That's, you know, remember when I said I, you know, the tile magazines and stuff like that, they get the... Um, you know the articles about technical stuff whatever i have like a i have a stack of them like this right i've kept all stuff like that yeah and you know some of the stuff that was interesting like this stuff here yeah right you would just file it away it's been in the same file you know i haven't really looked at this stuff in years because you know it's different now and uh yeah. some of these articles like you don't want to do that and uh <laughs> hey. but you know at the time it was what what was what you know that was relevant information at the time so, um, so you know, at one, at one point I was like, should I throw this away or should I keep it? And then I was like, eh, something's not hurting anyone. And, and now look at, look, now, yeah. now it actually <laughs> came into like, it was yeah. actually useful, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think of it the same way. It doesn't take a lot of room. Um, no. I've kept a lot of articles. Um, yeah. And I'm actually not like that. Usually I throw stuff away. Like if it's, if it's, if it's had its use, I'll mm -hmm. throw it away. But I guess, you know, there are certain categories that you just want to hold on to. I've got a couple books here. I wanted to show you because um, back in the late eighties, I got to look and see what year this 1987 for this one. Oh, oh, wait a minute. 19, oh, 1987. Yeah. And that's, that's a fella by the name of Michael Byrne. Yeah. Did you ever meet him? I don't think I met him. Well, you know something, I've met so many people and then, you know, not for the whole world to know now, names and faces are like, I'm really bad. Well, this guy is one that you would never forget. Yeah. He was, he's a very colorful speaker. He's great. Yeah. And um, so how it happened at JLC was that he was already writing articles for that magazine and so he was the speaker uh, about tile for JLC shows. Yeah. And one year, I don't know how the invitation occurred, but Michael said, hey, you know, I can talk about showers for a couple hours. And he, you know, he, he did, you know, he floated and everything. And he said, or it was an hour and a half, I think is what it was. And he said, hey, you know, if, if you guys want to uh, do your shower system while I'm talking, that would be pretty cool. So, so some of the early years, that's what I did. I would put up our Curdy and I'd put the, you know, tray. Because yeah, the Curdy board didn't come out until 2009. Right. So this was before that. So, you know, they would, they would have sheetrock and it'd be like a four by four enclosure. And the night before I'd measure and cut everything and label it. So to be fair, all I had to do was go on the stage while he's talking and have my thin set and go to town. And I'd get it done in about an hour. He still has a half an hour talking about traditional showers. <laughs> but, you know, every few minutes he'd turn around and say, well, now what Bryant's doing is blah, blah, blah. Yeah, That was huge. That really helped us because he was talking about traditional methods. And in the time he was talking, I was finishing a shower. Yeah in about an hour yeah, yeah the prep work for a shower right whereas if you were doing mud right you'd probably still be mixing <laughs> yeah yeah right still be mixing but i i just wanted to show you this book because it came out in 1987 and uh even to this day there's still some good you know he yeah. talks about mixing mortar you know mixing mud uh figuring out layout um so it was helpful this was about the only thing that was available yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, they had like, if you go into these box stores, they have these, sometimes they have these books, how to lay tile, yeah. how to, <laughs> yeah, probably, probably um, just to leave them on the shelf is a good idea sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do look at them and, and sometimes it's like, whoa, they're, they're only about 10 years behind <laughs> the information. <laughs> but. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to get your money's worth out of the out of the publication, right? <laughs> Did you say you had this one? 
You you sure do. And, and when I, you know, you probably got it the same place I did when uh, at the um, when we did the Schluter uh, in two thousand nine, the John Bridge. It could be, although they sent they 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 sent sent it out. You know, it was signed by yeah. by John Bridge. You've got a you've got a more more um, more yeah, de December yeah. of 03. Oh, so you got that before I got this in, you know, when we went to um, that Schluter thing and John Bridge, Schluter, they sent this out before. Oh, okay. I yeah, didn't I actually know. buy it, but they, they sent it out. And, you know, I, I kept it. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. There's one, uh, uh, one section in here that talks about stuff that you shouldn't really do. Uh. Um, I th if I remember correctly, because I did read it, right? Um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's actually frowned upon now. I'll have to go through it and find that. You gave, you <laughs> yeah. gave me something. You gave me some homework. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll be surprised when you see it. Huh. It's uh, otherwise than that, it's actually um, very informative. Uh, so so yeah, so um, you know we we got to talk about probably not now, but but shower systems, mm -hmm. right? And you know remember copper pans? Oh yeah, and and uh like a lot of guys today right like you know we have uncoupling membranes and you know mm -hmm. before we had uncoupling membranes a lot of a lot of times you use like the plywood like and you know what we talked about but then uh, what about backer board mm -hmm. so um and a lot of people today right they get the backer board I should have turned off notifications. Um, they get the back aboard and they just put it down and screw it down and nail it down without putting the thin set under it. And, oh, yeah. and yeah. that's that can be a huge problem. That can be yeah. a huge problem. So I mean, we should probably one day talk about about this stuff too. Yeah, I think uh you know a great topic would be shower systems and yeah. You know, talking about our history and experience. Yeah, yeah, because uh, you know, the more you talk, the more more stories come out. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. uh, you know, and stuff that you haven't thought about in a long time, and some of it is stuff that you really don't want to think about because <laughs> you're embarrassed to admit that you actually did it. Not because you you knew it was wrong, right? right. It, right. It's because that's how it was done. You know what right. I mean? Right. So. Um, you know, so some of those stories might be, might be, might be interesting. And even, even today, Sal, when I, you know, if I'm doing a workshop, attendees, uh, you know, will come up and show me pictures of showers that they're redoing for somebody. And you try and uh, hide your, your horrified look. <laughs> well, well, you know, I mean, we, we even show some images too. Yeah, yeah. And I always am the optimist to believe that no one did that on purpose. Yeah. It was just a lack of knowledge. And yeah, and I think we kind of started this, this whole conversation uh, today with, you know, knowledge. There's so much information today. That's another point that I wanted to talk about. Right. Mm -hmm. So up until like the internet era before the yeah. internet era, and even like in the early days of that, like, if you wanted to find out how to do something, you go to the library, right? I mean, if you knew a rep, maybe you could call them, but you know, back then a lot of people didn't know who they In fact, there's a rep that was that that's in the training department of yours that he was a rep for another country. And I actually knew him before he worked for Schluter. Uh, but we both I, did. We yeah. both did. <laughs> but I, 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 I digress, right? So, it's okay. It's yeah. okay. So, um, uh, if it's the same guy, he's Italian also. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good guy. Good guy. And Good he guy. never answers his texts. Oh, oh no. <laughs> well, know? he's, he, he does because he doesn't really check the text. In fact, last time I saw him, I said, you ever answer your texts? And he goes, well, like, I really don't check that. I guess yeah. the number I have or whatever. Right. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, so what was the point I was trying to make? Um, well, information. Oh, information, right? So where did you get the information from? Like I said, libraries, you, you know, you talk to some other guy, oh. if you knew a tile guy. And then how many tile guys did you really know? You know what I mean? Because today I know 
hundreds and hundreds of them, right? And that's because of the internet and because these closed Facebook groups. But the information was not hard, not easy to come by. Like I, I would, I have TCNA handbooks that go back to 1992, right? Mm -hmm. And so I would order those, not every year, but you know, every other year or whatever, I would order those. So, and there's only so much information. I know it's, it's there, but there's only, only so much information that you can get from that too, right? Oh yeah, and and then then the ANSI, like you know, I have I have an ANSI book here. You know what I mean? And you know the TCNA handbook. So that that was only really the only source of information you could get. And but today, you got workshops, you've got uh, the internet, you've got the. If you want to know how to do something, you can find it no problem. Yeah. So really, there is no excuse today for not knowing how to do something or not, or not having the correct information. Whereas back when we, we were starting, you went on how you did it, how you were taught or, or how you thought it was done. Today, you, you can find any product that you get, you can either find a video on it from the manufacturer. You can find someone that's done a video, like, you know, I'll do a lot of, a lot of videos like that. Or mm -hmm. you can call your rep or you can even go to a training training seminar or a training workshop. There's no excuse to not to know how to use something. I agree with you. And I think that is it. That's the sin is if somebody does something when there's all these options of knowing how to do it. Yeah, to find out. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. and, and, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, manufacturers videos, which, and your videos, there's, um, uh, you know, the reps themselves, right? Yeah. There, there's usually an 800 number to the factories. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like Tim, I'll call Tim. Like sometimes I have a question that I know the answer to, right. But I'm like, you know, not a hundred percent sure. I'll call, I'll call Tim. Right. I'll say, you know, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. He says, yeah, no, that's right. Or you might want to do this or whatever. So now I'm not like guessing. Mm -hmm. I, I know. And so, and then sometimes it's something will change too. Oh yeah. So I, I've got this customer who ha he hasn't been my customer for a long time, but he still calls me. Yeah. Okay. You know, and um, he's a great guy. They have a family business. So he and his sons and they do everything, carpet, vinyl, hardwood and tile. So they don't do tile every day. They don't do tile, maybe not even every week. Okay. So guess what? I'll see. He's calling me. I answer him. And he's just double checking to see if anything changed, right? Just like you just said. And you know what I tell him? You know, he'll say, I hope I'm not bothering you. I'm like, you know what? You're doing the smart thing. Yeah, he's not bothering you. No. And sometimes yeah. you like to hear from those people that you haven't talked to in a long time. Well, that, and I appreciate, I admire him for doing that because yeah. he's staying out of trouble. Yeah. Well, I, I got actually got a little story for you too, right? So, you know, the Dietra heat. The, mm -hmm. How long is it, when did the Dietrich heat come out? It came out uh, uh, 2014. 2014, right? So this is one of the one of the probably the not the first, but you know, like a year in or, or so, mm -hmm. right? And I did this bathroom and I did the shower, and then I had these long three 36 by six inch plank tiles, wood look plank tiles on the floor over Dietrich heat. Mm -hmm. So the carpenter comes in, he puts a baseboard on, and he chips one of my tiles. Oh, right. So now I had never pulled up a tile. Now it doesn't bother me as much because I've done it now. Right. Mm -hmm. So now I have to change this tile. And I'm like, how do I go about this without damaging the wire? Yeah. So I call Tim. Hey, Tim, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I need to pull up this tile. Says, I'll come down one day. I'll get my FLIR camera. Right. Cause he has a FLIR camera. We'll mark out where the wires are and you know, and then we'll pull out the tile. So he came down. And, and he was there while we did the, um, well, I pulled out that tile, right? And, you know, we tested it afterwards. Everything was good. Put, changed the tile. So that's another thing about, about your rep, right? If you have a problem or if you have, like, you need to resolve something, right? If you know your rep, he can help you out. Yeah. And, and um, I just wanted to add to that too, Sal, because um, our video department, we did a, uh, we have these shorter videos called, um, tips, and tricks. tricks. Yeah. And FAQs. And there is one, it's probably two minutes long on how to 
take a tile off a Dietra heat. Yeah. We did it one also tile off a Curdy board, tile off Curdy. Uh, I actually, I actually did one because you know what the big, now it's, it's kind of different now because of the, uh, you know, before everything was like unmodified mortar on, mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, on, on the Dietra. On, on the uncoupling membrane, right? Mm -hmm. And I always get these questions, but porcelain, it won't stick to porcelain tile. It won't stick to porcelain tile. So I did a video, uh, it's probably a few years, few years now, where, again, the carpenter putting the baseboard in, chips a bunch of tiles, right? I hadn't even finished the floor yet, and he was putting, you know, other sections in, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I had to rip up the, the, these tiles. The tiles was a big floor. So I, they had been down maybe four or five days, right? And I have a video showing just how well porcelain tile sticks to uncoupling membrane with uh, unmodified mortar. Came mm -hmm. up at a million pieces. Yeah. I might, you know, I, you know when, when this video is done, I might actually link to that video in, in the cards or you know what the cards are, right? The little information tabs. Uh, I might link to that. Okay. Okay, you okay. just like, poof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got me beat on the whole <laughs> internet, yeah. YouTube. Well, the people watching this video, right, will know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I know. You got a smart audience. <laughs> like, in this, no, wait a minute. In this corner here. <laughs> right. Pointing yeah. to it. So, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, uh, do we have anything else that might well, be Well, I would, I would just say, you know, um, I think we, we mentioned how, how did we get where we're at today? Yeah. And, and what does it mean to both of us to yeah. be where we're at. Yeah. Know? Well, yeah. And you know what the thing is told, so, you know, um, when you like, when I finish something like a bathroom, right. I still get that. Like, you know, you oh, look yeah. back and you and you say, say, wow, you know, did I really do that? You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you got to have passion for what you do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you, you, you don't, you probably don't get that as often as you, as as you used to now because you you know you're training people but i'm i'm sure you must get like a a, a lot of satisfaction when you know you 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 know that you've showed someone you know something that they didn't know before i i was just thinking of that sal because you're right when i stopped being a full-time tile contractor you know every day every week you had something to be proud of right yeah. Yeah, you stand back and you, and because you you go in a lot, lot, lot of times you go into a shower you just studs and then that's when right. you leave you go to working shower. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, and that was hard to walk away from, right? The customers that you know pat you on the back, they rave about, we love it. They tell all their friends, and so when I started with Schluter, um, one of our management guys said, "You're not going to have that with this job," and. I, I could say he was right, but he was also wrong because if you're a good action from something else. Yeah. If you're a good rep, which I think I was, um, you get people who trust you. They'll call you every time they'll thank you. So you do get that. Yeah. And when I do a workshop, like we'll do a survey at the end and I love to read them. And when I get good remarks, there it is. Yeah. You know, everything you do, you got to find some satisfaction in it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what's the point of doing it? Right. Right. So, you know, you, uh, I, I think that's pretty much, if you're doing something just because it's giving you a paycheck. Yeah. Maybe it's time to find something else. Yeah. You know, no, I've been, I've been very fortunate because I'm still in the industry and I, I think it's, you know, I've made so many friends that I would have never known. Yeah. You know, but our industry is not that big. It's pretty cool. A lot of great people, talented people. And um, we still have some really thick headed people that. Uh, <laughs> well, hey, that's going to happen, right? <laughs> people just don't want to, no matter what it is, right? They know one way and that's how they're going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And which is fine if it's the correct way. But there's a lot of installers out there that have a certain way they do it it's the wrong way but they don't want to change yeah so well you know you know what what it is that's fear isn't it yeah i, mean, I well, think some, 
some people fear change. That's yeah. it's scary, you know? Yeah. I know when I used a brand of thin set that we we both know which one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, other brands wanted me to use theirs. It's really hard to change, right? Because yeah. you get in a comfort zone and if you don't have problems, you say, why do I change? It's walking, so, right? Yeah. Why, why, so, change, why, why change it if it's not broken? Yeah. So I, I understand that. So as a Schluter rep for many years, I had to understand, you know, what are the other motivations for change, right? Yeah. Well, and, you know, something as long if, if you have like an inkling to improve, mm -hmm. right? Or you have, you know, somehow you get that, that, well, there's gotta be a better way or there's, you know, that's like the start of finding out new information and finding out new products and, you know, something that might be a little bit better, mm -hmm. a little bit easier. Well, and, and, and if it, at the end of the day, if you can make more money. Yeah. Well, you know, e even, even like, I used to install a ton of backer board for floors. Every every floor that I did would mm -hmm. be like mm -hmm. a backer board, right? Yeah. And then uh, you know that's a lot of work. Right? I think I think if we do a, a a short segment one day on underlayments, I think we'll have some good stories of you know the Luan, the plywood, the backer <laughs> board. You know, yeah. no, I, I'm I think, just I, you know I'm I'm gonna be sixty three, right? Yeah. So the less I can carry the happier I am yeah. and uh, you know, uh, um, carrying a roll of, of uncoupling membrane, mm -hmm. like what's the Dietra roll, the big roll is 360, 355. What is it? 323. 323. Right. Mm -hmm. So carrying a roll, a 323 uh, square foot roll of Dietra up to the third floor or the second floor. Oh yeah. Uh, beats carrying, um, I don't know how many sheets of quarter inch back aboard. I mean, yeah. I, uh, I used to know that number. I think it's 20 or 21 sheets. Yeah. A backer board. <laughs> yeah. Now that's just, that's just a 323. Let's say it's 646 square foot job. Now two rolls yeah. take a few minutes Yeah. or 42 sheets of backer board. Yeah. And then you gotta, and then you gotta cut them. You gotta, with uh, whatever it is, a scoring, uh, you know, score and snap. Or, and then you gotta make all that dust and sweep up all those. <laughs> I think we got to save all this for our underlayment chat. Yeah, I, I think so. I think we're, we're doing, I, I think we can probably call it a day right now. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I, think I think we covered a lot of good and interesting um, stories. We, co we covered a lot. And I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm kind of proud of both of us. We're helping the industry in our, in our own yeah. ways. You yeah. Know? And you know, um, really you uh, kind of fell into it. I did. I right? fell into and, it. And me the same way. I never, like, I, I wasn't like, I'm doing these videos uh, to do this. It was just like something that just happened. Yeah. So. Sometimes that's the best way, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I Unexpected mean. Unexpected surprises. Yeah. I mean, if I had to do it again, I probably would. Mm -hmm. I, I might do some things different. But overall, I think uh, I, I think I would follow that path again. You know, I, I wonder, Sal, if we'd ever have a chance to do a, a segment together where we might invite a few, a few of our friends, you know, that'd be fun. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I've got some that uh, I've known for many years that you may know or may not know. Yeah. Um, they have that same. Yeah. Well, you know, we do. you know, like let's call us like old timers. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we've been in the industry for, for, I've been in the industry since 1984. You've been in it since, if you go back to your father, since what, the seventies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, I think you'll find that a lot of people that started where we started, right. Have a very similar story. Yeah. 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 They'd have to, because they were exposed to the same limited information. Yeah. And they were using the same products we were. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right I'm, or wrong. Yeah. I'm sure the stories would be very, very similar because yeah. you only had, <laughs> we talked about the tiles. You had eight colors. Okay. Yeah. 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 You had eight colors and you had six by six and a four and a quarter, six by six and an eight by eight. And occasionally those wall tiles, oh, the lug back wall tiles. Remember the lug back wall tiles? Oh. <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do with those things. <laughs> Put no mask on it. I, I hated those things. 
<laughs> it's like, do I just touch the the you know? Yeah, the, I know the high I points know. or oh, what? Yeah, deeper trowel, right? More mastic. <laughs> well, that depends if the store gave you enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah. That's um. You know, it reminds me when when you just said that for a lot of us that go back to the eighties and even further to the seventies that we're very, we're, we're going to be similar. Yeah. And it reminds me of something that, you know, every once in a while, Mr. Schluter would say something and I go, wow, that's genius. And one of the things that always stuck with me is he said, it doesn't matter if you live in Australia or Brazil or Italy, Germany, uh, Canada, the same tile setting, challenges are the it's the same no matter yeah. where you live yeah and you know what a lot of times what amazes me too is right um you talk to some of these newer guys that haven't been in so long right like for me for like for, for a tile cutter you know a snap cutter mm -hmm. you got you, you probably had one of those superior snap cutters like the i had a superior board run yep. ones right i still yep. have i still have those and i i, I still I have use my problem. old one i still use it for like subway tile yeah right? A lot of these guys, like they're on there and they don't even know what a snap cutter is. Mm. Nips. They don't know how to use nips. I, I'm like very proficient with nips. You I've probably got, haven't I've touched got, one in who knows how long because you don't set tile anymore. But when I've, you used it, I'm sure you were very good good with it. I've oh, got God. three, I got three different nips. Yeah. Yellow handle, green handle. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then, you know, it's just just funny how how things change. I mean, the thing is, right, there's more ways to do things, right? But sometimes some of the older ways actually are uh, uh, like maybe quicker than the newer ways. Yeah. Like for a snap cutter, right? How many times, you know, you got to put a tile, you, you, if you got to cut a tile with a wet saw, a straight line, right? You got to run it through the saw, you got to dry it off, blah, blah, blah. You, you put on a snap cutter, and you're done. Yeah, and, and the tile's not wet. And the tile's not wet. And you don't have to worry about uh, bond breakers. Right. That's right. right. But anyway, we could keep on going and going. <laughs> I know we, we could probably do a segment on tools. Yeah. So um, I think um, I think we should call it a day. All right. OK. And thanks for uh, inviting me. Oh, today. Thanks for for doing this. Um, I, I had a good time. I, yeah. enjoy, I enjoyed. You know, we've talked many times before and, and something new always comes up. Oh, something, yeah. Something new always comes up. So, yeah. um, so Brian, thanks for participating and yeah. let's do it again. And All right. uh, we'll talk about something that we haven't talked about this time. New stories. There's still a lot. There's <laughs> still a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, don't forget to check, check the description for uh, relevant links and uh, I'll, you know, it's a bunch of stuff in there. And uh, I'll also link the Schluter channel in, in the description. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Sal. Okay, take it easy. You too. Bye-bye.